Cuba offers a multitude of fishing destinations, and a yacht from Avalon Cuban Fishing Center's fleet is the perfect way to reach those destinations. On this trip, we're fishing from the 75-foot Perola in areas we've never explored before. So it's all about new territory today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Oh man, <laughs> so we just worked the, the canal there and you never know what you're gonna catch. Just took a couple of casts and actually I was reeling in and this red snapper hit. And that's the thing, these red snappers are, are really good eating. They're just uh, a great eating fish here. And they're real aggressive too and they fight great. And that's what we've been eating on the boat, lots of snapper. That's nice. <laughs> And that's a red snapper. Very good eating fish, but we'll let him go. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> red snapper. Hey, that's what we've been eating the whole time on here. And he ate the big red and black. So we just started out working a few channels, looking for uh, anything big to move. Haven't seen any tarpon move yet, but you know, it's only been 20 minutes. So hopefully we get into some tarpon here pretty quick. So this is what you're looking for on these flats. You can see that. The big, big sand pile there. Essentially, that's all just a huge school of bonefish stirring up all the flats. And that's where you're looking for those small little puffs where the stingrays are stirring stuff up. You find a lot of permit behind them. And even in this grouping, we'll see probably 200 bonefish and potentially some permit behind. I mean, look at that. That's just crazy. Just amazing how big and the number of bones in there. You can't see them right now because it's so stirred up, but there, there could be you know, literally hundreds to stir, to make that kind of stirring. Oh, oh, oh. oh, wow, we just got, just got into the hole, took a few, uh, took a few casts, and well, the third cast, he took it. I just had to get it more in the, more in the sand, more in the leading edge. We were trying to fish the early edge in the sand, and we had nothing until we got right into the, to the thick part of the stir up in here, you, right? you can't even see the bottom. And that's when this guy hit, put on a little bit heavier fly too. We're down about, uh, you know, about two, three feet and had to have something that sunk down a little bit bigger. You know, our normal one we actually use here with the rubber legs. That Cuban shrimp we tied on the bench many times and it works, they like it. I don't know how big he is, but he took a, as all bullfish, took just a scream and run. And you know, we'll just stay in here. We'll take a few more casts through here. Then we'll work the next pocket. We'll work that next pocket of sand there and just pick off bonefish. Too much fun. This is a nice size. <laughs> That's an eight weight rod. Never come underpowered. Always make sure you've, you've got them charged up. Now let's get this guy, let Joe unbutton them back there. All right, you unbutton them, barbel suck, and there he is. Ah, good. And what I do with the bone fish, just to make sure that that fly is jumping along the bottom, is just quick little strips, you know, pop it up, let the fly pop off the bottom, and then settle back down the sand. And you want to just keep it moving, just erratic little little movement, just so that shrimp is is bouncing up and down off the bottom, and that just gets them all cranked up. Going through the mangrove tunnel. Never quite done this before. 
find our way into these little bays and where the tarpons sit. Man, it gets hot in here too. Oh. Got to be 100 degrees in here. Better know your way around. Wouldn't want to get stuck in here. <laughs> We'd never find our way out. <laughs> I think we're out. We made it. Big snook, there's a tarpon in there, a smaller one, right in the mangroves. And then a big snook came out right behind him, pointed out here, and then just darted back in. We just got to get him coming out. Well, that was interesting. They're sitting right in here, right in the sand. I made a couple of casts right in here, but then I wanted to get in there right, you know, right tight, see if we can get them, but that's what happens. You end up hooking on, <laughs> hooking on the mangroves, tried the sidearm, flicked in, caught that mangroves as it was going in. So now I'll have to get in here and take it off. I got him. I got him. Finally made the good cast and got him. Gee, that was tough. Made the good cast under the tree and he came out and ate it. And that was, that's about the toughest fishing as you're going to get right there for snook. Whoa. Whoa. Got to keep him out of the mangroves after. Get him out here. But that is, that's, uh, that's about the toughest cast you're ever gonna have. You gotta sidearm it, you gotta snap it so the fly shoots into the bush, get their attention, it plopped, and then he, he came and ate it. And he's a nice size snook. Oh yeah, look at him, he's beautiful. Oh, it's a beautiful snook. Why? And that was a big key there, is getting the cast so it got his attention. You know, he had to see it. So he had to flick it right in front of his nose, let it plop, let it sit, and then get it in. Oh, that's about the toughest cast, casting that I've ever had to do. Boy, he's a nice one. That's my first snook. Yeah, very first snook. Yeah, hey, look at that, how's that? Beautiful, how big? Yeah, um, see? No, no, that's how big. Four, four five, meters. five. Excellent. Very nice. Four or five pound snook. And there were some big ones in there. there. There was a couple earlier that were mulling around. They had to be 15 pounds. They were like three times that size. This big coming out. But they were finicky. This guy here, at least I got his attention and got him to go. So, and there he goes. Get him underway. Gave me a great fight for, for that size fish. Yeah! So we're in the, we're in the snook only zone and you saw now the action's over how tough it is. But when you're in fishing these mangroves, again I'll mention you, it's a level of frustration. You know what's worth it when you hook these beautiful snook, but Man, they'll sit right in those little mangroves. You gotta learn how to sidearm cast and you gotta flick it. So what I'm doing when I'm sidearming, I'm sidearm casting and as it stops, I just pull back on my line and that snaps that fly into the zone. So as long as you know where about your fly is gonna be, again, you stop cast. So all I'm doing is I've got the zone reach and then I just stop it and just pop it and that fly shoots in. Once you learn that, you can catch a few schnuck, but <laughs> be, be ready to snag a whole lot of mangroves. Oh man, I made two good casts. This snook right here, look at him. Look at him, sitting right there. Look at that guy. He's just sitting there. I flick my cast in. What do I do? But I hook the mangrove. And I think I hooked it pretty, pretty good. Oh yeah. Right in front of him. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, I put it right in front of him. Look at him, he gone. I finally, I made the great cast and he didn't eat it. It was right in front of him. Oh, he finally came out to this little pocket right there where the dirt is. I flicked my fly in there, made the good little flick cast, stopped it, fly landed. He kind of moved over, stripped it twice and he didn't eat it. And then I, of course, when I pulled my line, I scared him. Oh, 
So they don't eat all the time. I, I thought they would have, he would have eaten that for sure. That was in a good spot, Joe. Didn't eat it. Wow. That's, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's, it's tough, but it's a lot of fun. On the technology today, I want to talk to you about the importance of sunglasses. They don't just enable you to look into the water, but they actually protect your eyes. And Maui Jim makes a variety of sunglasses for different applications. The first set I really like in sunny conditions is this pair here. It comes in a variety of styles and it's got the darker lens. So it's really good when you're in really bright sunny conditions. The next pair of glasses is this one here and they have the bright lens. So what it does is enable you to see brighter conditions when you have cloudy skies. Very handy for that. So really good for our BC lakes. The next pair has the HCL lens, or that's what they call it. And it's almost a bronzy lens. It's really good for both applications. So it's nice when you have intermittent clouds, sunny and then cloudy conditions. This set is very, very good. And the final pair is one of my personal favorites because I can't see close up anymore. Is they have a nice light, bright condition lens in there, but they also have the cheaters underneath. So you can put these on and if you look down, you can actually tie your flies on without having to change your glasses. So there are just a few samples of the polarized glasses that Maui Jim offers. The main goal again is to protect your eyes from the UV radiation and stray hooks. You know, the beauty about coming down here, especially being on the parola, is you come out in the morning, you fish till about one o'clock, go in, you have lunch, have a little siesta till about 3, 30, 4 o'clock. So we've come back out at four and now we're gonna fish right through until dark around eight o'clock. And we've got this big, huge ledge in front of us, actually a big reef shoal. And the big tarpon will start sliding in off from the deep water and come in and feed all on the inside and outside of this reef. So it could be a very interesting night for tarpon. Oh, oh he's gonna go. He's gonna go, oh, that's a big one. Oh. Oh man, <laughs> that is a big tarpon, wow, wow, that's a big fish, just right in this, right in this stuff here, oh there, oh, wow, wow, <laughs> oh, look at the size of that, that's a big tarpon, man. <laughs> That's just amazing. Man. Oh, look at how gorgeous this fish is. Whoa. Whenever they go, we just bow to them, really bow. Oh, I'm going to have to let them go here. Oh! And there he goes, just like that, just through the hook. You know what though? That's a great way to release a fish when they're that close and they throw the hook. You got the whole fight, you got the take. Oh, that doesn't get any better. 65, 70 pound tarpon. Oh man, we just started the afternoon, so stay tuned. It's gonna be a rocking evening, wow. Fish. Where are they? I don't see them now. I lost. Just as I was letting that one go and talking about the fly, three more tarpon came in behind us. And Joe's yelling, they're, they're right there. And they just. But you know what we're going to do is right now, well, we have a break because it's, you know, like I said, we got three hours left of great tarpon fishing. Let's go to the bench. I'm going to tie you up the the black and red tarpon toad. This fly has been spectacular for us every time we've been down here. So let's go to the bench, tie you this up while we look for some more tarpon. <laughs> Good 
Today on the bench, I want to tie you up the black and red tarpon toad. It is a very effective pattern for tarpon and works really good as it gets into the later evening. So make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a size one stainless steel saltwater hook, some three aught black thread to tie with, some black marabou for the tail, some red EP ultimate fibers for the body and head, and some large black mono eyes for the eyes. So the first step is to put on your thread. And when I'm tying on my thread, I've actually started on there. I'm gonna go right back kind of to the hook bend and just make sure the hook is covered with a little bit of black thread. And then I'm gonna wind it back to about, you know, another third back from the hook bend. And that's where I'm gonna put in my tail. Now I want a nice uh, black marabou tail. So what I'm gonna do is take two fibers. I've actually taken one marabou feather and the other, and I'm gonna place them just so they face out a little bit. Just face them together. Pull that in. And then measure up just about the, the length of the hook. Just a bit longer. Move it back to the position about a third up from the hook bend. And tie that in for the tail. And create a little bit of a body also. Moving forward towards the eyelid. Now that the tail's tied in, I've taken uh, some of my EP fibers and I've pulled off about a quarter inch diameter. If you look at the diameter there, it's, a, it's about a quarter inch. So I'm gonna put them on the back of the hook and take two wraps, one, two loose wraps, tighten up a little bit, and then go around the other side and just do another couple of wraps. And I wanna take two or three wraps there just to tie it in and go in front of those fibers. Now what we're going to do is keep progressively pushing this up the hook and keep stacking it back to form the body and the head. So now that I have my first set of EP fibers cut in, I'm, I've cut off the excess here and I'm again going to tie in another set right behind my last one. Take two wraps, tighten up a little bit, go around a couple times there and tighten up and then go in front and keep pushing it back to stack these EP fibers up to form a nice head. Cut off your excess. And again, place it in front of the other EP fibers and continue up until the head's finished. So now that we've worked our way up and have our head and body built, we're going to take a couple of our black mono eyes and we'll put these in right at the front of the hook and take a few wraps around and tie them in and make sure they're nice and secure. It takes, uh, you know, a few figure eights, probably five or six really good figure eights and make sure they're tied in good. Now the eyes are tied in, we're going to finish off the fly. So I like to do a good whip finish. On the head, do a few, a few wraps. I like to double it over a couple of whip finishes. And then what we're gonna do is take the fly to the vise and trim the head to shape. Yeah, take this out. And now trim the head. So there it is, the finished black and red tarpon toad. There's a couple of patterns I always make sure I have in my box when I head down to Cuba. The green tarpon toad for the daytime tarpon fishing and of course this black and red when we fish in the evening. Got him, got him. One thing too when you're tarpon fishing, you know, you should probably have a little bit of a fighting butt. I could add a fighting butt on here because I'm going to have bruises on my arm and my hips. And you know you've been, whoa, you know you've been tarpon fishing when you come back with a bunch of bruises. That's all part of it. Wow. Yeah, nice sized fish. Not huge, but great aerials. Oh. <laughs> They don't give up easy. Oh, oh. oh. oh gee. <laughs> you just know whenever you feel that fish going and they go hard, just reach your whole arm out and extend to them. Because if you don't, it's either gonna break you or he's gonna spin it. What a great way to finish off the day. You know, what a fantastic day here we had. I got the, uh, got a shot at a, permit, caught a nice little bonefish, went after some snook, which was, as you saw, very, very frustrating, but well worth it. 
and then we come out to the reef after our little siesta and a little bit of lunch. Whoa, if you ever want this experience, so you gotta come to Avalon because it's absolutely fantastic. Give them a call. And there's lots of different areas to fish. In this parola section on that parola boat, you fish areas that have just incredible, huge flats, beautiful areas. Gee, I don't know how big he is, but what a scrap. Man, let's keep working and working back and forth. Oh. Flies out, we'll hold him up. Yeah, oh, there it goes. All righty. <laughs> nice. What a great way to finish off the day. You know, stand over here, Joe. Yeah. Thanks a lot for the day. Another great day. You know, we've had some fantastic days out yeah, here. It's fantastic. It is. It's beautiful. And what a way to finish up. We had some beautiful tarpon today. We showed you a schnook. We got the bonefish. Had a shot of permit. Another day. great day. Yeah. So if you want an adventure like this, give Avalon a call. They'll, they'll set you all up. You got many different locations to fish. When you're out here, take care, conserve our waters, and we'll see you next time when we take you sport fishing on the fly. Woohoo! <laughs> nice. <laughs> to watch all our latest sport fishing on the fly episodes and to order sport fishing on the fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.